Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what a person is doing. That haya if a person has within him or herself, subhanAllah, it will take him to great heights. Haya from Allah. That I, my Allah has done so much for me. Why do we have that concept? In front of my mother, I'll keep quiet. In front of my teacher, I'll keep quiet. In front of my grandparents, no, I can't do that. Why? Because I'm indebted to them. I, they've raised me from day one. They've done everything for me. Out of respect for this elder who has done so much for me, I'm going to zip my mouth. I'm going to control my emotions. That's what we do. But my brothers and sisters, there's no one who showered us with more blessings than our Creator, our Lord. From day one till the last day. And beyond that, once we're in the grave and then when the real life begins of the hereafter, we are only and only at the mercy of our Lord, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There has to be a level of haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And if that's lost, then the opportunities to sin are going to be endless. As we move forward today in these days, in this modern day and age, Technology has made it sinning something of a second nature. Sin is something which is in our pockets, which, which is at our fingertips. It is with us in the masjid. It is with us at the haram. It is with us in ihram. It is with us in hajj and umrah. It is with us in the month of Ramadan. It is with us in the graveyards. It is with us everywhere. The ability to commit sin of all sorts is at our fingertips. A person can use a cell phone to gamble. A person can use a cell phone to order drinks. A person can use a cell phone to look at haram, to order haram. All kinds of stuff can happen with a person's fingertips. Credit card is there, phone is there. The possibilities of sin are endless. The possibilities of sin are endless. Now at that time, subhanAllah, for a person to not be able to fall into this trap, what's going to be required? Haya from Allah. What does it mean to have haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that. And he explained that it would be that hifdhul ra'as wa ma wa'a, protect the head and whatever it comprises of. Meaning protect that tongue, protect those ears, protect those eyes, protect the mouth from eating consuming haram. This tongue is moving at a very fast pace. In seconds, I can tear away at someone's honor. I can attack someone's honor in seconds. In one second, I can attack a whole community, a whole masjid, thousands of people, a nation, a gender, a, a, a ethnicity. Very quickly, this tongue can do damage that a, a, a huge arsenal of bombs can't do. Very quickly, a person with this tongue can dig such a deep pit for himself that the world's bulldozers won't be able to dig such a deep pit for oneself as quickly as this tongue does by the misuse of it. Whether it's backbiting, whether it's slander, whether it's accusations against one another, subhanAllah, raising doubts against people about people's honor. All of that is done. Protect the tongue, protect the ears from listening to ghibah, listening to people, you know, useless, cheap jokes about people's honor, you know, indecent type of jokes. Protect our ears from that because they have an effect. Don't think it's out the one year, in the one year and out the other year. Absolutely not. It's damaging. Like looking at a murder scene. Allah forbid, Allah protect us from having to ever see something like that. But you know, it's traumatizing, right? They say it's traumatizing psychologically. Similarly, watching sin, listening to sin is traumatizing to the soul. Because it's trauma. The spirit, the ruh, the soul has suffered. It was beaten up horribly. It was abused at a young age. So much sin was committed. So much sin was, was seen. So much sin was heard that now it's very difficult for that soul to get purified. We've never given a chance to heal. You know, subhanAllah, you're beating down upon someone, give him a week, two weeks to heal. But when he came to the soul, day after day, night after night, it was back to it, back to the sin, back to the sin, that the soul did not get an opportunity to rejuvenate. The soul did not get an opportunity to, to connect itself with Allah and get some energy like this. Ruh, spiritual feed for our soul in the dhikr of Allah, in the recitation of the Qur'an, in salah, in performing wudu, in feeding the poor, in wiping our hands over the heads of the orphans. These are things that bring spirituality to our heart, give strength to our ruh. But if a person didn't do that and constantly sinned again and again, day in, day out, then that spirit, that soul takes a huge hit. The eyes, of course, are part of the head as well. That a person, whatever he sees, he has to ensure that he uses those eyes to see that which will take him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Looking at ni'am of Allah, looking at the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pondering over 
if this flower is so beautiful, if this sky is so beautiful, if the, if the star-lit sky is so beautiful, imagine the khaliq of this, how beautiful this must be, subhanAllah. Imagine the creator of this, how much it must be. Brothers and sisters, we need to gain an appreciation of our Lord. We have thank you cards for each other. We, have, we say, subhanAllah, thank you two times for someone who opens a door for us. We feel obliged to someone who gives us a bottle of water. For someone who, subhanAllah, waited for us to, 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 to bypass them at a red light or a green light. And we wave at them. Everyone, we value what they do for us. Save Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is that one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How often do we sit and say, Ya Allah, I am so thankful for what you have done for me. I'm so grateful for what you have done for me. You have showered me with beautiful parents. You've showered me with a beautiful spouse. You've showered me with children. You've showered me with health and wealth. All that you have given me, Ya Allah, I want to simply say thank you. I simply want to say, Ya Allah, that I am appreciative and I am not deserving of this. Continue to shower me with these blessings. Do not allow my ungratefulness to become a means of myself being deprived of these blessings.